Hey guys, welcome back to Puffalada, and welcome back to Café Enchanté. We are, hmm, it's just the time, like, there's a giant arm now, which means that there's a giant body connected to the giant arm, unless it's a floating arm, which I have no idea. We defeated that one, but it sounds like they're afraid that it's gonna continue, so... Now Mazir is saying, hey, like, I, I can take care of it, but I might, like, need your help and stuff and he feels bad. So we're just gonna see what everybody has to say. Let's just get right into it. <laughs> That's the reaction we were waiting for. The others remained standing as Mazir covered his mouth after his awkward speech. Nora. Oh. Oh. Ignis flies into Mazir with a merciless kick. Ma, kore mo ii kikai to. Oh my god! <coughs> uh, why is everyone hitting him? As Mazir was losing his balance, Mr. Rindo delivers a chop to the back of his head. And as he picked himself back up, Kanas came with a devastating flick, also to the head. With all of these somewhat painful attacks, Mazir couldn't decide whether to cover the back or the front of his head. Oh! Huh? Oh! <laughs> oh my god, ew! After curiously watching this steady string of attacks, Eel delivers a splendidly graceful and merciless slap to Mazir's cheek. What? Me. Unable to stand any more damage, Mazir's body took a step back before crumbling backward. In his daze, Mazir finally put his hand over his reddened cheek, where the loudest sound of all of the attacks was made. <laughs> As Mazir lay there, teary eyed. Teary eyed. I smiled as I began to understand what everyone was trying to say. No, Mazir. Your logic, your apologies, and the need to take responsibility. I think they're saying they don't need to hear any of that, right? We're all your friends here, so of course we'd help you. That's what they're trying to say. Huh? <laughs> I love that. I love how they just turn to violence. Ugh. Oh, beautiful, Ignis. Beautiful. Oh, look at this surprised face. Mazir sat there surprised while Kanas explained, sighing in amusement. Oh, <笑><笑><笑> Wait. Oh my god, ew. Yeah. For a moment, he didn't seem very satisfied with this. Mazir. I'm certain everyone here feels the same way about all this. Not that I personally can do much to help. Everyone support me and leave it all to the all-powerful demon lord! That's the kind of boasting we expect from the Mazir that we all know and care about. <laughs> Mazir's smile eventually peeks out, showing his gratitude to the others. Oh. 
なんとかなるさ。ああ、そう、ビューティフォー。The same as usual, just a little different. His purpose was declared proudly. This is so cute. I love this gang. Oh, God. <laughs> I love how Mazir is able to, like, kind of, like, open up, too, a little bit. Oh, Jesus. Off the shore, further out into the ocean, seen above the endless expanse of water, ominous aircraft cutting through the skies. Right, right. I totally forgot that. The fucking country was like, let's just blow it up. It's fine. It's not going to do anything. The bulk of the defense force scrambled for deployment. F-1- F-15J fighter jets? I have no idea what that looks like. Maybe, uh, Jenny, if you- future Jenny, editor Jenny, uh, if you can find a picture of one of those fighter jets, you can just put it here. I don't know what it looks like at all. But. The pilots in their cockpits held their breath as they approached the target, gazing at the cracks running across the sky. They thought it absurd to receive an order to attack the sky above the island off the coast. Now, facing the menacing sight before them, they were forced to stop laughing. They took their mission seriously now. However, the pilots, taken in by the abnormalities of the sky, were in for a bigger surprise. As they failed to notice the winged angel flying as fast as the jets were, at the very speed of sound. That's terrifying! <laughs> Good god, imagine if you're just flying a fucking fighter jet and you turn to the side and there's just fucking eel being like super casual. To a ye, Stotsi Stotsi, I made a decision, not in seconds, but in an instant. I feel like that, that's not a good idea. The moment he makes his decision, Eel flaps his wings, ascending into the heavens. Considering his target's speed, he'll have to cut out performing his usual calculations. Instead, inhaling deeply, his lungs fill with oxygen. Damn. <laughs> he sings like, whoa. With a special prayer, his voice sings towards the heavens. Even though they understood the urgency in being scrambled, the pilots inside the fighter jets instantly forgot the danger that was right in front of them and were entranced by the singing voice that came out of nowhere. However, the objective of the fallen angel wasn't exactly to provide a free concert. Suddenly, the fighter jets eel viewed below him slowly started to descend. Oh god, eel! Observing this, Eel applies some of his magic, allowing him to communicate with the pilots who were panicking at their plane's behavior. What the fuck? How is he able to do that? このまま海面へ着水させますので、念のために衝撃に備えていただけますか。もちろん安全面は保証いたしますので。Bruh, honestly, Eel would make a perfect flight attendant, but also, Jesus Christ, that's terrifying. What? That's impossible. The voices were heard amongst the pilots, one after the another through their radio. Just as the fallen angel declared, the jets descended until they touched the water, no longer unbound by gravity. Well, they tried. I wonder whose perspective we're in now. At the same time, right as when the fighters touch down on the water one after the other. Oh, oh. <laughs> Ignis murmurs to himself along the shoreline as he squints up at the ominous looking sky. <laughs> Oh god. With that, Ignis kicks off some sand and starts to run. Kicking up clumps of wet sand, he cuts into the cold waves of the ocean. Without any hesitation, he didn't stop at the water's edge. He ran straight into it. Are you saying this while you're running across the water? 
Oh my god. Koltane would be standing in amazement if she were here. He was actually running on water. Little explosions blew out under his feet before they touched down as he glares at the navy ships. <laughs> With a shout, he swings his arm. A giant wall of flames, hundreds of meters tall and wide, erupted from him. It was a cage of fire. They were the prey. It surrounded two ships, making it impossible for them to move forward. It would be more of a problem if they actually tried to advance and just ended up sinking. God. <laughs> but the cocky laugh, Ignis raises his hand. Fallen Angel, who seemed to have accomplished this goal as well, grabbed Ignis's wrist, hoisting him up into the sky. <laughs> I can just imagine them like floating in the air, they're just a couple of balloons, like. <laughs> あちらはあちらで対処できるでしょう。ここはイグニスの提案通りで良いかと。ただ、あ？イグニス？無事に安心点戻ったら減量してみてはどうでしょう。わ、最オープンの時よりも2.4キロほど体重が増加していますよ。
This would be easier, I guess, instead of me running and hiding somewhere out of reach. Following his suggestion, I walk toward the center of the magic ring and stand next to Mazir. The cure that was with us also stood at our feet, ready to burrow itself when the time was right. I actually hoped it would hide back in the cave, but the regulars suggested that in the worst case scenario, it would be the safest to be close by, so it stayed here with us. さて、Rindo, no, Rindo, you're like old, you're like 40-something, like, no, just let, let Kanas handle it, let the young people handle it, it's okay, you don't need to, like, injure yourself, oh my god. Receiving a response from the two reliable men, Vizier gives a cheery smile. Rindo's already almost died, like, so many times, I just want him to be, like, he should be standing in the circle with us, honestly, like... Um, Mazir, is it okay that I'm here? I know it's safer here, but I might ruin your focus, so I'm a bit わ心配って。それは無用な心配ってやつだね。むしろ君がそばにいると安心って寝るような気分でリラックスできるんだよね。ほっとするっていうか懐かしい香りがするっていうか変に緊張しないで済む。Okay. Mazir lets out a sigh and grins. <laughs> Dame da na. Kimi to Anshante no namayo dashita dake de. Ima suni ni demo. Kimi ga irete kureta kohi o nomita kunat chatta yo. Stop flirting! This is not the time! And a reply to Mazir's gentle voice and smile. Wow. If we all get back alright, I'll pour a special coffee just for you. Tobikiri? Yeah. Actually, I've been researching a lot and I've been working on my own blend. Something no one's ever made before. I haven't had anyone taste it yet. So, Mazir, if you'd like to, would you do me the honor of being the first to try it? As I considered how simple and quaint my token of appreciation must have been. Oh, oh. <laughs> he's so cute! Mazir looked like he was at a loss. Oh, no. He's so excited. Mazir? Ah, yeah, That's weird. Okay. As Mazir spoke, the cracks splayed through the sky. H here it comes! I listened to our surroundings. I didn't hear anything that sounded like fighter jets or navy ships at all. That being the case, all we needed to concentrate on is the threat of the wormhole and the spartoy. After confirming that was the case, Mazir laughs and continues what he was saying. <laughs> Oh shit, picture get! What? Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> right as Mazir whispered, a part of the emblem at his feet came up off the ground, floating as if it had a will on its own. Oh, piano! They float up around him, one after another, turning upright, sideways, changing shape. It looks like a keyboard made of light. Oh my god, he literally made himself a piano. The moment Mazir put his hands above them, Oh, I heard a colorful variety of sounds that spread across the world, one by one. <laughs> Playing his mystical piano, his fingers sliding one after another. <laughs> he didn't seem like a demon lord. He was a pianist, playing the most sublime melody you've ever heard. Mzir's performance began to have an effect. 
It was as if they were screaming. The cracks in the sky all began to groan loudly. As Mazir called that out. Oh my god! Ten Spartoi from the forest appeared by the shore, charging towards Mazir as soon as they saw him. The difference in our numbers makes me hold my breath. Rindow! <laughs> I looked to see that one of Mr. Rindo's rounds hit a Spartoi right in the forehead. Oh god, wait, what does his knife say? Oh god, I can't read that. That is way too fucking small for me to read. But anyways, that's cool. His knife's cool, but... Oh. Immediately after, I heard five gunshots, one right after another. In no time, their numbers were down to four. They're still running at us, though. Still refusing to shy away, he readies a knife and continues his attack. Oot. He easily kicks one right in front of him and cuts two through two more nearby. While the cure and I stood stunned, Mr. Rindo quickly reloads, and the remaining two, in no time, met their fate by the barrel of his gun. What? Wow! Wow! Applause! Applause for Rindo! Honestly, that's pretty impressive for someone who isn't non-human at all. That is crazy. Probably trying to reserve his strength, Kanus thrusts his sword into the ground. Continuing on, as if in rhythm with Mazir's performance, Mr. Rindo takes on the Spartoi that attacked us from every direction. He takes down- oh, he takes one down with each turn of his head. Round after round, calmly and with precision. He had no sort of overwhelming power, but his shots, never missing a target, clearly showed Mr. Rindo's composure as well as his tempered accuracy. Mr. Rindo quickly reloads again after returning several more Spartoi to Ash. Ah! Oh. <laughs> God. There was sound from the rustling grass. From beyond the trees, more Spartoi revealed themselves. Right when Mr. Rindo was about to ready his gun. For some reason, as if he thought it over, he lowered his weapon. He came back toward me, rather, back to the cure at my feet. Huh? おそらく<笑> With that, Mr. Rindo pulled out his... Uh, um, Mr. Rindo? I spoke out to him without even thinking. I couldn't even tell what he had in his hand. A tried and true... Ha ha ha! Don't worry about it, you're just a little grenade. You guys are a little bit different. Don't be blushing when you're talking about grenades! Like... This is a real one. With a kind smirk, Mr. Rindo doesn't hesitate to pull the pin. He tosses it effortlessly at the spar toy. Do it! Oh, I thought it hit one of them. I was like, oh my god! With the Kure scream, a violent sound and shockwave erupted through the forest. And following that, skeletal remains rain down the area. Hmm, Mama Mr. Rindo spoke completely nonchalantly. 
Good God, he's out here throwing grenades. <laughs> oh, a flashback. Kanos no hoa. Mondai nai. Nuron da. Michel o fukume. Omae tachi ni mo kizu hitotsu tsuke sase wa seru. Sono yatsu kan de yuare chou to omoazu amae taku nat chou kedo. Boku wa boku de chanto hataroku yo. That's what he said before the fight started, but... Mr. Rendo, what were you talking about earlier? You're really strong, too! <laughs> Even though he laughed it off, it was clear that his actual physical capabilities were more than just a few moves. Sate, Kanus. And we're gonna stop here. Oh my god, Rendo is a beast. <laughs> I honestly was afraid for him because it like he was like really struggling with Karia back in the like previous episodes. Like he got stabbed, he got wrecked. He's probably still injured, I feel, but I mean I guess it's been like a couple months from that. Either way, uh Way to go. Way to go, Rendo. I... I must say that you completely changed my outlook on you from the very first meeting where I thought you were disgusting to now. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways, next episode, we're gonna see if Connus helps Rendo. Of course he's gonna help him, but we're gonna see what he does to help him. 